Hey, hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to configure and use AWS controllers for Kubernetes, generally called as ACK. So as you see in this PPT, this PPT depicts my demo. Here I'm gonna show you like how we can configure and use uh, the ACK tool on EKS to help us to manage our application on, on EKS clusters, right? So as you know that when we use EKS as workloads, it does not mean that you know we are done with all other you know the resources required for our applications right in general we are also will be dependent on the other services of aws say like to host your you know uh, databases you could be using rds services or to manage the you know queues of your request you could be using the you know the queue services like you know mq or other queue services so in such cases what happens is you know you will have to manage three infrastructure in the sense like EKS as one infrastructure then you need to manage the AWS managed services as another infrastructure in the sense you have to provision these services explicitly outside the EKS cluster get it managed and then you need to map the application you know you need to map the configurations of those resources into the Amazon EKS then you know the EKS can you know coordinate with those services and the application will start working right so now those so the here there is a complexity in the sense there is a dependencies in the sense one configuration is not enough you need to maintain two config two stateful configurations right so in such cases you know we will have a, a tool called you know aws controller for kubernetes which will help us to manage the these you know independent resources which of the aws being from from the eks cluster right so for example how does it works is when i'm invoking the when i'm when i create a amazon eks cluster right i do define you know i do define the um, you know once the eks cluster is up and running fine i do define like you know what are the application it needs to be hosted on that right by using kubectl command and all right something the same thing we can do it for the the supporting services of your application which is hosted on the eks right so in such cases we use ack right so in general we can spin up these rds other so you know mq you know services with using ack utilities right and finally we can expose that service over the load balancer and we're going to show like you know how does that application gets uh, access over the internet okay all right so this is the just a pictorial overview what i do is i'm going to walk you through the commands step by step and finally uh, help you to realize that you know yes we can use the ack to manage our complete eks you know workloads end to end from you know from the single deployment like that yeah so what i do is i will take you to the uh, uh, to the you know cloud9 so this is my aws cloud9 service and i have opened an id environment so this is my id environment so here for this demo purpose i have used aws given you know workshop right so for that case what i did is i just logged in into the um, cloud9 and then opened this terminal so currently i'm in a terminal what i do is what i do, do is i have run the commands in a serialized and i'm going to help you to understand what did i do and how does that you know ends with an application working as expected right so here first one we are actually configuring the um, setting the cluster name that we want to provision in this demo right that is the eks cluster name which is setting as an you know environmental variable of this ide that is you know integrated development environment my eks cluster name is eks workshop then what i'm doing is i'm just running this command that is curl uh, nothing but you know just downloads the, the cluster.yaml file so this cluster.yaml file is nothing but you know this is just a, a definition of my cluster that is eks cluster how the eks cluster should be spent up like how many nodes what is the you know the eks version what is the vpc blah blah everything will be defined in this cluster.yaml file and that is being pipelined to ekctl utility that is ekctl create cluster right so ekctl is a utility from aws with which with using that you know you can spin up the eks cluster which is very easy and you know managed right so here since i am showing you more focused on you know ack that is aws controller for kubernetes so you know we have spent up the eks cluster like this and indeed the creation of eks cluster will take nearby 15 minutes i have uh, if you see the time it has started for 6 44 but you know the successful creation as is ended at something like 59 which is nothing but nearby 15 minutes time it has taken all right so that's the reason I'm, i have already run the commands and i'm gonna walk you through these commands one after the other so now our cluster is up and running fine so i will take you to the cluster so this is the eks cluster which we have spinned up by using the ekctl utilities and the status of the eks cluster is is active right and then we go to the next one that is uh, you know i just run some random command just to check you know if everything has happened something you know with the magic no there is no magic happened here if you see the command that is kubectl describe deployment so it found that there is no deployment like this 
then I did run a kubectl command to say like kubectl get node just to check the nodes of my AKS cluster. It does, it does, you know, it actually returned the, you know, the, the nodes that is current. It has a three nodes. Uh, if I go to this one, so we have the uh, nodes, you know, uh, computes, and we have the nodes actually. So this is a groups, and we have the three nodes underneath these groups here. Yeah? So those are all running fine basically yeah so it is not available here but if you go to the ec2 machine so we will have those uh, uh, nodes available here all right so then we go to the next two commands so basically our cluster is up and running fine okay then what we have to do is we have to prepare the again we have to prepare the um the ide environment or the you know the cloud nine environment so to do that what we are doing is we are running prepare hyphen environment auto automation control plane ack so this is something like you know Automation control plane ACK is a repository managed by AWS and we are just using that repository configurations to help to configure our, you know, the, the IDE environment. It just resets the environment, uh, you know, waits for application to become ready, uh, cleans up the previous lab, something like it's nothing but it just makes the space good to, you know, start actually. And then we go started. So once I do run the command that is prepare environment action control plane, I, you know, ACK basically it, it actually downloads the <clears throat> so it actually you know the um, it actually downloads this particular workshop that you see here that is eks workshop id right so if i if i if i um, minimize this so you have the eks workshops uh, modules we have the modules uh, and then we have the you know so underneath that we have a folder structures so in this one we care about a folder called ECK, you know ack that is aws controller for kubernetes right all right, so that is what I did then. Then we go to the jump to the next one. That is, um, you know, this is the command, right? As I said, now you have the a cluster up and running fine, right? Now think that, you know, I'm not doing any kind of Terraform code or I'm not running any APIs or I'm not running any EC, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, CLIs, that is AWS CLI. And, you know, eventually, but I could show you that, you know, the, the uh, required AWS managed services, which is needed for your EKS cluster like RDS are getting provisioned and then mapping of those services in the application is happening like a magic. And that is what the advantage of ACK is all about. So here a cube CTL apply and then what we are doing is we are applying to a folder called you know, ACK RDS Kubernetes. So this is automation control plane and in that one ACK we are jumping to the RDS right then I'm I'm going to the uh, to the Kubernetes if you see the there is a Kubernetes so in this service you know if you see here there are like a certain configurations anyways I'm going to share these uh, you know these ACK folder uh, from my github repository you can use it and follow the same commands or, or you can just follow the whatever command from the id you will realize that you know, this uh, this is a working lab actually basically yeah all right so in this command what we are doing is we are actually doing a certain configurations on the Kubernetes. So whatever, whenever we run the kubectl command, which is nothing but we are actually configuring something on the EKS cluster, or we are actually invoking the API servers of of the Kubernetes, right? So here, uh, you know, this Kubernetes folder does has some YAML uh, configurations which actually define certain resources. If I can tell you with one example, that is RDS Security Group. So what has happens is there is a um, um, yeah. So we were talking about um, um, basically we were talking about the um, uh, you know, we are talking about the ACK. How does the ACK do, and what does the ACK do, right? So that definition is been defined here. That is RDS Security Group. So how does it look? Is something like this. If I can um, expand this correctly, so here I will just uh, open this up. Yeah, maybe I will open it in a new terminal. Uh, uh, just a second. So basically, uh, what we are doing is, you know, this file. Uh, if I open this, okay. So uh, let's go to the terminal, and I will down the terminal basically. Uh, all right. All right. So I will just download it here. I'm gonna show you like this. I will just uh, let's let's download and show it because this is uh, ID being minimized, so that's the reason it is not able to open. So I will just download it for you right away. So if I open this in the in the Visual Studio Code, so this is my Visual Studio Code. So with using the ACK, what we are doing, right? So this is what the you know the ACK is helping all about. The API version is something like this. That is Kubernetes dot AWS uh, version one alpha one. So security group, we are actually creating the required security group for the EKS cluster. But how are we creating? We are not creating with using Terraform and CLI. We are using the ACK, you know, the ACK, uh, you know, modules, uh, basically ACK utility and, and creating the resources being from the cluster. In the sense, cluster itself from the cluster, we are invoking the API and creating the resources. Yeah. So this is our cluster name. This is the catalog name. Yeah. And this is the description. Then the name of the, uh, you know, the, the name of the uh, uh, security group would be something like this. Pointing to this VPC ID and it has the one ingress rule being defined. Yeah. 
So like, likewise, likewise, you know, so likewise the other resources like RDS instance. So you must should be showing, you know, you should be showing, you should be seeing this RDS instance as well. How did we do that? So I will just download it for you. And we're going to see like, you know, how does basically it, it does also has the configurations. If you go here, it does exactly has the same kind that is DB instance, right? So here is a security group, DB instance. What are these? These are all the AWS resources, right? And these resources are being provisioned from the, you know, from the cluster with using kubectl. That is the, that is the magic here, right? And all of the, the, the DB instance configurations are being given here. That is the DB instance class is this one. Uh, identifier is this one. Then we have engine equal to MySQL, right? So that is how, you know, the definition has been defined in this folder structure called Kubernetes. And that is where we are actually, um, uh, you know, uh, running the command. That is, what is the magic happening here is if I run the kubectl command, it is spinning the, you know, it is spinning the AWS resources that is needed for my EKS cluster, right? And that is what it happened here. If you see, it, it has the, you know, the config map, security group, DB instance, and DB subnet groups have been created. All right. So here, um, what I what I do is, unfortunately, I missed to configure and do the prerequisite of the DB instance. Right. What is that prerequisite? In the sense, we need to have a master password. Without that, we cannot spin up the DB instance. Right. And that was my mistake. So if you see here, I go ahead and try to get the DB instance service status. What it says is message here that you know the Kubernetes secret was missing. Right. And then later, I did run the another command which will actually create a Kubernetes secret and that secret is reused to spin up the DB instance, right? And the command is kubectl create secret generic catalog, this one, blah, blah. And this is the dynamic password, right? And that secret is being created in the sense we are creating the Kubernetes secret that could be used as a master password while creating the DB instance. And then I reapplied that same command that is uh, nothing but, you know, invoking the all uh, specification files underneath the Kubernetes folder. It, that, it, it actually created the config uh, security group, uh, DB instance, right, subnets, everything. So now this time DB instance got created. If I go to the DB instance, so this is the, you know, the, you see the AKS workshop catalog ACK, right? So if I go to the, this one, our name of DB instance is nothing but my cluster name hyphen catalog dot ACK. So if you see here, that is the EKS workshop hyphen catalog dot ACK got created, right? So magic here is, you know, we are not using now we are just using the kubectl to create the resources which is needed for EKS application, right? <clears throat> once the you know, once that command is done, I run the next command to check the status of the uh, uh, you know the EKS cluster, sorry the the RDS instance, and it got successfully created as I showed you here. Then let's go to the next one. So once we are done with the you know the Kubernetes uh, you know the requ required resources of of my application, right? That is I need RDS, I need MQ. I'm just showing you in this uh, you know in this design PPT. But you know, as you, as I, as we when we run the kubectl uh, apply command, it does create it for me. That is a magic here. All right. So next one is is you know so basically next one is next we have a two steps to execute. One is field export, and the other one is deploy application. So what is this? So if you consider that you know you are deploying the your you know EKS application infrastructure with using Terraform, what do you do? You write a Terraform file for DB instance. You write a Terraform file for Kubernetes. You write a Terraform file for you know the even for uh, kubectl. In the sense, you write the Terraform file with the Kubernetes provider and try to map the uh, the resources that is provisioned in the AWS. That is uh, like a DB instance a secret manager. Then you what you do is you try to map the properties of these resources into the Kubernetes as a kube config. You know as as you know as a secret or a config map. Right, and that is what it happens in the field exports. In the sense, it exports the required properties of the resources that we provisioned with using kubectl in the AWS resources, and then it maps as a config map, and then it will be that config map is used by the application deployment. If you go to the you know the field export, if you go here, so we have these uh, field export that is environmental variable customizations, RD, you know RDS uh, field exports, uh, RDS secrets. So if I open this, um, so if I download this and show you. So basically, it does has you know so it just extracts the you know the the, the secrets in the sense it does creates the secret that is kind of secret name is you know the catalog db backup this is a secret the password is you know the catalog password right all right so that how is that because you know we, if you go to the secret before we spinning up the RDS instance we create a secret here right that is a secret and right? this is the catalog RDS PW uh, you know the name of the secret and that is what we are seeing the way we can see it here that is catalog password all right. Okay, so with that, you know, so basically we will be running the field export uh, command immediately after that. So how did I do that? The You need to follow my selections, whatever I'm showing in this, my descriptions in this video. So kubectl apply, 
and apply the field export it does configure the certain config maps that is config map it does create the secret and it's, it it is it also creates a field export uh, i know the configurations on the eks cluster that is field export service kubernetes dot aws catalog db endpoint catalog db user so these are the information that it got created these informations will be used while using the while you are deploying the applications and i do also retrieve those information by running the command that is kubectl catalog you know catalog get secret uh, output as an ml and then convert that into the data format in the sense to retrieve the data that we now needed right so this is what the endpoint it got created right and then let's go to the next one that is uh, basically the final step that is apply apply my application nothing but deploy my application in the sense this is like a business this is pure business right so if i if i download this as well this is pure pure basically you know the the um, uh, you know your 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 actually your application deployment specifications you see it has a deployment uh, you know the name is catalog blah blah in the sense it just deploys some some example application into the eks right and that is we are deploying through the uh, through the cloud nine ide and when when i run this command it actually creates a namespace called catalog service account config map secret services services and then finally deploys an application and stateful set is being set yeah and then we once that is happened we nothing but you know we are actually deployed end to end application on the kubernetes right with using all kubectl commands and then you see that you know the, you, you need to check the you know the application rollout status that is kubectl rollout status of the deployment called um, in the catalog deployment name of the catalog and deployment is called catalog and the rollout is successful then i what i did is i just run the command to get the service uh, service front end that is nothing but lob so in the sense we also have the lob definitions here so this is network load balancer is also been defined here so if i open this download this as well so basically in this demo purpose you know there is already have a you know the the service and that service is using the load balancer that is aws uh, application load balancer and that application load balancer service is uh, oh, is you know the value of that application load balancer or uh, the front end ui of that particular uh, front end url of that particular um, application load balancer is being retrieved by this command once i copy this and go to the browser like this and hit it the endpoint here you go our application is up and running fine i know and even i can show you the you know the functionalities are working right so how do i confirm that functionalities are working because you know the redirection is working all right so i can do a checkout i can do a remote right so i can fill this data blah blah and all which means that you know my application is is you know up and running fine so what did so till now what we have showed you is we have showed you that you know with using the aws controller for kubernetes you know we can manage the you know the related services within the eks cluster and that is eventually reduces the complexity of the configurations increases the speed helps the developers right and so that's a basically the advantages of ack all right so with that note i have shown you the things need to be shown in this video finally i can request please subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot so with that note thank you thanks a lot and see you in the next video